When the Razer phone debuted last year, gaming phones weren't really a category. Now, however, there appears to be quite a number of them, like the Asus ROG and Xiaomi's Black Shark Hilo. So Razer, not wanting to be left behind, has come up with a successor, the Razer Phone 2. The difference here is that Razer wanted the Phone 2 to be a flagship-level phone, a handset that gamers would gladly trade in their Pixels and Samsung Galaxies for. And while the Razer Phone 2 certainly has some improvements over last year's model, it's still a tough sell for most people. In a lot of ways, the Razer Phone 2 looks and feels very similar to its predecessor. It's a big rectangular slab with thick bezels. Razer said that this design keeps it in line with the rest of the company's hardware, but I can't say I'm a fan. It's uncomfortable to hold for long periods of time, which is kind of an important factor when you're playing a lengthy game like Fortnite. It's an even bigger pain for people with small hands like myself, so I find it almost impossible to hold one-handed. Flip the phone over and you start to see the first signs of improvement. The Phone 2 has a glass back which feels more like a premium handset. There's also a Razer Chroma logo on the back which lights up in a variety of colors. It has three modes, static, breathing, also known as a pulse mode, or spectrum, which rotates through a bunch of different colors. Interestingly, it also functions as a notifications light. If you get a Facebook message, it will glow blue, for example. And if you're low on battery, it will glow red. It's a small thing, but the Light Up Chrono logo goes a long way in making a cold, chunky phone feel more personal. The display on the Razer Phone 2 is where it really shines. Even though it still has a 5.72-inch EXO LED screen, it boasts a wider color gamut and extra brightness. 580 nits instead of 380 in last year's model. That means deeper blacks and more saturated colors and I like that I can actually use the phone in bright daylight without the display looking washed out. That said, it's not quite as bright as competing Android phones with OLED displays. I'm not too fussed about that though, because what it lacks in vibrance, it makes up for in performance. Like the original Razer phone, the Razer Phone 2 has a 120Hz screen refresh rate. This results in buttery smooth interactions when scrolling through menus, flipping through Instagram, and of course, playing games. Another feature that the Razer Phone 2 inherited from the original is Dolby Atmos enabled speakers, which is a good thing because these are definitely one of the best built in speakers we've ever heard from a phone. All right, gang. Move on out. The sound is not just loud but also surprisingly crisp and balanced. No, you won't get deep bass here, but for playing games and watching movies on Netflix, it's great. <laughs> I also appreciated the spatial surround sound feature, which is useful for hearing enemies creep up behind you in games like Fortnite. Speaking of which, this is a gaming phone, so let's talk about gameplay experience. It's especially good with graphically intensive games like Vainglory or Fortnite, both of which I spent way too many hours playing. With Fortnite in particular, I really appreciated the visual detail and smooth performance, as even the tiniest bit of lag could mean death. Plus, the Razer Phone 2 also comes with a game booster mode that optimizes the phone settings based on the game that you're playing. So if you play something like Vainglory, you might want all of them settings maxed out. But if you play something less intensive like Pokemon Go, for example, you can dial it back down to a power saver mode to conserve battery. Not everything is so rosy though. For one, the phone can run a little hot. Yes, the Razer Phone 2 comes with a vapor chamber cooling tech that the company inherited from its laptops. But play a game for a good 20 or 30 minutes, which is a bare minimum when it comes to some of these titles, and the phone still gets uncomfortably warm. Another disappointment is the phone's camera. Again, Razer made a big deal that the 12 megapixel shooter on the Phone 2 was a lot better than the original with a whole new app that has the HDR, portrait modes, and beauty shots. While it's certainly a touch improved, it doesn't compare at all to something like the iPhone or the Pixel 3. Photos look flat and washed out, and low-light photos can get terribly noisy and blurry. The Razer Phone 2 comes with a 4000 mAh battery, which I found beefy enough to last me a whole day of regular use. We're talking emails, Slack, and playing the occasional YouTube video. But once you throw in a couple hours of gaming into the mix, battery life drops by about half. Playing Vainglory at max settings for about 30 minutes, for example, can easily see battery life drop by 10%. Fortunately, the Phone 2 comes with Quick Charge 4.0, so 
so you can easily top off the phone from 0 to 50% in just 30 minutes. This way, you can quickly charge the phone when you get back from a long day at work and have it ready to play right after you've had dinner. In the end, the Razer Phone 2 is a phone made for a niche category of people, hardcore mobile gamers. If you belong in that category, the Phone 2 might very well be a great phone for you. It has nearly identical specs to the Asus ROG as well as the Xiaomi Black Shark Hilo. That said, the Razer Phone 2 and the Asus ROG are the only ones available in the US. Compared to the ROG, the Razer Phone 2 is cheaper. It's available at a lower price, $800 versus $900. It's a micro SD card slot and it's also water resistant. At the moment of this recording, we're still not sure how they compare in terms of camera quality, performance, and other factors. So if you're in the market for a gaming phone of this caliber, I would say wait to see how they both compare. As for the rest of us, I would say you can safely pass on the phone too. Casual gamers and non-gamers need not apply here. The not so great camera and chunky form factor puts the phone too squarely in the realm of gamers who prioritize gameplay over these other features.